Hello and welcome back to the channel. So in the previous lecture we have seen all about what is Spark streaming and how we can process the data coming from various streaming sources in real time. So without further ado, let's get into it. So in this lecture, what we're going to do is we will be publishing some weblog information using Flume and we will use Avro as a sync and then we can process the data using a Spark streaming script written in Python. So for this lecture, you should be having some knowledge around Apache Flume which we have discussed in our previous lectures and in the last hands-on, we have seen how we can publish some web blogs using a spool directory as a source which listens to a specific directory in our SDP sandbox and publishes the data whenever there is a change and it publishes it to the HDFS. So instead of that, we are just going to use Avro as our sync. So enough talking, so just quickly go to the putty and open up a terminal and you have to log in as you know that maria underscore dev we have done this a million times okay so once you log in just log in as a root user because to get you all the privileges okay so the first thing would be to get the configuration file for flume where we will configure all the source type the sync types and the channel so to get that you know the command so I have already put it in our Hadoop repository. So just give wget https colon slash slash raw dot github user content dot com slash ashe patel 11 slash the repository which is Hadoop slash main which is a branch slash spark underscore flume dot cons which is a configuration file for a flume. Okay, so once we got the file, let's see how it looks like. So this is very similar approach of what we have done previously. So we have set up a spool directory as a source which listens to this spool directory. So we have already, I guess, set up this directory in our Flume lecture. So it is nothing but listens to this spool directory for any upcoming changes. But here the only change would be the sync which we have given as Avro instead of HDFS and it listens to localhost 9092. So this is the only change which we have done. So what it does is it will listen to that spool directory for any upcoming data uses Avro as a sync and then Spark streaming job will pick up the data from this sync and process it to get the required output. So our next step would be to get the Spark code from our GitHub repository. Okay, so let me just clear up the clutter and you know the command. So just type wget https colon slash slash raw dot github user content dot com slash ashe patel 11 slash hadoop slash main slash spark underscore flume dot py so it's a python file so just hit enter okay so let me show you how this code looks like so this will not be much understanding so let's see this code in my local code editor so i have the code ready in my editor so this is how our spark code looks like so it is written in python so first of all, just as usual, we have to import the required modules over here. We have imported the Spark context, streaming contents, and for Flume, we have imported Flume utils. So the first thing would be, we have to set up the regular expression parts because it is very mandatory because all you guys know that the access log file is very hard to read and you have to extract the meaningful information using the regular expression. So these parts will extract the host name as well as some unused attributes also it will extract the user time request which is very important here as well as the status size and the user agent so this useful information it will pick from the access log file line by line so this is how you have to set up the regular expression so the first step would be this function which is nothing but the extract url request will get the line as input so each line of the data coming from our access file will go into this function and all it does is it will extract the URL coming from the access logs. So it will go and check for each line and gets the request information and extract the URL from the input. So this is the main goal for this function. So simply said, it is just extracting the URL from our line of data, which we are passing in this function. And the next one would be, this is very simple code and it's very short, but it does a very meaningful thing. So let's understand it one by one. So the first step would be we have to set up our Spark contents and give some app name. So if you go and check the logs on our Spark web UI, you can just search for this name to get all the information. 
then we have to set up the log level as error so it will not give us any junk logs so it will only give the information about errors then we have to initiate the streaming context using the spark context and you have to set up the interval for one second so it will check every second for any new data which is coming and then for connecting flume with spark you have to set up the flume stream which is nothing but the D stream which is represented by the RDD which is resilient da distributed data set so I hope you know about RDD and this is the connection to our local host 9092 which we have given in the conf file so it will connect to flume and look for any data which is coming every second this is what it is doing so the next steps would be the processing steps where we will use some math function reduce by key and window functions as well as the sort functions to process and sort the data into required format so the first step is we have given the math function to a flume stream where we are getting the url from our each line so this will run on each line in our access log file so this extract url request will kick off our pattern matching which takes the line as a input and again give us the url as a output then we have to reduce that url over a five minute window sliding which runs every second so this is the output for this line so what it does is it will take the url as an input and it uses map function to map every url to one so that it will be useful to count how many times that specific url occurs so that will happen in the reducer function and we have also used the window function to give all the addition and the subtraction for it and we have given the 300 seconds window so that it will reduce the url for every five minute and it will look for it every second so 300 second means five minutes and we have given the sliding interval of every second and then it is very straightforward now we are just sorting out the results and printing it to see the output but also you have to remember one thing when you're using the window function you have to also set up the checkpoint directory where it will store the status of your process so whenever any failure happens, it will check on that specific directory, which is nothing but we have given it as a checkpoint. And then it uses a failure recovery mechanism and continue the process from where it got errored out. So this is very important. We're using the window function in your Spark streaming job. So this is the functionality of this code. It looks very straightforward, but does a very wonderful thing. So without wasting any time, let's kick off this job. Okay, so once we are back, just hit escape so just give like wq and clear up the mess so our next step would be to make that checkpoint directory so that is our first task so to do that just give like ir and give checkpoint so that the directory which we have given in our code will exist okay and as i already know that we have our access.logs file from our previous lecture so as you can see access underscore log dot text file is already there so if you don't have it, I'll just give the link to get this file from our GitHub repository in the description below. So if you face any issue, just drop me a comment and I'll get back to you. Once it is done, it's time to kick off our Spark code. But before that, we have to set up Spark version to 2. So to give that, you have to give like export, then type Spark underscore major underscore version. So this is very important because Hadoop will come pre-install with two spark versions so give like two okay so i guess we are ready so we have to submit our spark code so you know the command so just give like spark dash submit then you have to provide the packages for it so give like packages so the package is org dot apache dot spark underscore spark dash streaming dash flume underscore you have to give the version to your spark as well as the scala so give 2.11 colon 2.3.0 so this is the version for our spark and scala respectively but it is for the hadoop 2.6.5 but if you have like 2.5 version of hdp sandbox just look out for these versions so you can get it by using the spark shell so just kick off the spark shell and you'll get the versions that's the simple way and after that submit the file which is spark underscore flu dot py that's it hit enter so it will just take time to kick off the file so since flume service is not running i don't think it will get any data because we haven't kicked off the flume service yet but let's see how it is listening to data every second so let it run 
So as you can see, it is successfully downloading the jar files. So let it run. And as you can see, it is listening to every second. But since it is not getting any data because we haven't kicked off our Flume service. So let's do that in the second terminal. Okay. So as you can see, our Spark code is running and listening every second. Just kick off our Flume service in our second terminal. So just give the password and login as a root user. So you give us your root. Okay. So you have to kick off the Flume service. So you have to go to the Flume directory. So just give like CD slash user slash sdp slash current slash flume dash server that's it and you have to kick off the flume agent now so give like bin slash flume dash ng space agent dash dash con so the con would be default so just give like again con then you have to pass the con file so just give like dash dash con dash file and the file is in home slash mari underscore dev and slash the file name so our file name is spark underscore flume dot conf and again you have to also pass the name of the agent so in our file the name of the agent is as usual a1 so if everything looks good kick off our service so it will take time to check it up okay so as your service is running let's time to put some data into our spool directory so to do that again you have to open our next terminal so as you can see on the one side you have the spark code running and on the other side you have the flume running. So again go to putty and run again your third terminal. Yeah so you know the password. Yeah. So all you have to do is you have to copy our access log file. So let me just give ls. Okay. So as you can see we have the spool directory present. So if not just use the mkdi command to make this directory. And you also should be having the checkpoint which we have made and we also have the access underscore log file from our previous lectures. So if you don't have it, I'll just get you the link in the description below because I have already kept it in the GitHub repository. So all you have to do is just copy this access log file into the spool directory. Okay, so it's just the copy command. You copy access underscore log doc text into the spool directory slash so you have to give any name. So I don't know, just give like log one dot txt. Okay. Hit enter. And as you can see, we got some changes. So this is the URL and this is the count of that URL. So since it's a very huge file, you can see the difference, right? So here are all the URLs and here is the count of the URL. So you'll get the information that how many times this specific URL present in our log files. So this is very good to get you some insights. So it is just listening every second and it is reducing it on a five minute interval, which is nothing but 300 seconds, which we have given in the spark code. So I hope you got the idea how it's working now. So you can just go back and stop the services. So you stop the spark code as well as the flume. And also don't forget to shut down your SDP sandbox in a proper way because it will cause some issues in our next reboot. Go to machine and click on ACPI shutdown. So I hope you like this lecture. So please subscribe to our channel and also ring the notification bell to get the latest updates. And don't forget to follow us on our social media that I have linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.